Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditation upon our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight as we learn what it means to love. A simple four-letter word that has a lot of implications for our daily living. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. In the name of the living Christ, amen. Let me tell you a story. Some time ago, I learned that there is power and sacredness in story. In story, the Holy Scriptures can find their modern day application for our busy, hectic, daily lives. This story takes place in a restaurant. More specifically, a restaurant that is com commonly known as a trucker's stop. It's a true story. It's a story about a special boy with a special talent. And yes, the names of those involved have been changed to protect their identities. As an employer, I try not to be biased when it comes to hiring people. But when I first saw him, I had some serious doubts and reservations about hiring Stevie. His placement counselor assured me that he would be a good, reliable busboy. Yet, I had never had a mentally handicapped employee and wasn't sure I really wanted one. I wasn't sure how my customers would react to Stevie. He was short. He was certainly not the best dresser in the world. He had smooth facial features. And there were even times when it was difficult to understand what he was saying. I wasn't worried about most of my trucker customers because truckers don't generally care who busses tables as long as the meatloaf platter is good, the pies are homemade, and there is more than an ample supply of hot coffee. Four-wheel drivers were the ones that concerned me. Those mouthy college kids traveling back and forth to school those yuppie snobs who secretly polish their silverware with their napkins for fear of catching some dreaded truck stop germ, or the pairs of white-shirted businessmen on expense accounts who think that every truck stop waitress wants to be flirted with. I knew these people would be uncomfortable around Stevie, so I watched him closely for the first few weeks. You know what? I should not have worried. After the first week, Stevie had my staff wrapped around his little finger, and within months, my truck stop regulars had adopted him as their official truck stop mascot. After those first couple of weeks, I really didn't care what the rest of the customers thought about him. He was a 21-year-old in blue jeans and Nikes, eager to laugh, eager to please, but fierce in his attention to his duties. Every salt and pepper shaker was exactly in its place. Not a breadcrumb or a coffee spill was visible when Stevie got cleaning the table. Our only problem with Stevie was persuading him to wait to clean the table until the customer left the table. He would hover in the background, shifting his weight from foot to foot, scanning the dining room until the table was empty. Then he would scurry to the table and 
carefully bust dirty dishes and glasses until his cart was filled and then meticulously wiped the table up with a practice flourish of his rag. If he thought a customer was watching, his brow would pucker up with added concentration. He took pride in doing his job exactly right, and you had to love how hard he tried to please each and every person he met. Over time, we learned that Stevie lived with his mother. She was a widow who was disabled after repeated surgeries for cancer. They lived on their social security benefits and public housing, public housing two miles from the restaurant. Their social worker who stopped to check on him every so often admitted that him and his mom had fallen between the cracks. Money was tight. And what I paid him was probably the difference between them being able to live together and Stevie being sent to a group home. It was August, and Stevie didn't show up for work. It was the first time in three years Stevie missed work. The restaurant was a gloomy place that August morning and everyone wondered where Stevie was. To our surprise, we learned Stevie had been admitted to the local hospital. He was going to get a new valve or something put in his heart. His social worker said people with Down syndrome often usually have heart problems when they become young adults. So this wasn't anything unexpected, and there was a good chance he would come through the surgery in good shape and be back at work in a few months. A ripple of excitement ran through the restaurant and the staff later that morning when word came that he was out of surgery, in recovery, and doing fine. Franny, the head waitress, let out a war hoop and did a little dance in the aisle when she heard the good news. Bell Ringer, one of our regular truck Trucker customers stared at the sight of this 50-year-old grandmother of four doing a victory dance beside his table. Franny blushed, smoothed her apron, and gave him a smile. He grinned. Okay, Franny, what was all that about? He asked. We just got word that Stevie is out of surgery and is going to be okay. I was wondering where he was. I had a new joke to tell him. What was the surgery for? Franny quickly told him, and the other two drivers sitting in the booth, and all of them sighed when they heard about Stevie's surgery. Great, I'm glad he's going to be okay, all three said in unison. Franny continued, but I don't know how he and his mother are going to handle all of the bills. From what I hear, they're barely getting by as it is. The three truckers simply sat there as Franny hurried off to wait on the rest of her tables. Since I had not had the time to round up a new busboy to replace Stevie, and I really didn't want to replace him, the girls were bussing their own tables until we decided what to do. After the morning rush, Franny walked into my office. She had a couple of paper napkins in her hand and a funny look on her face. What's up, I asked. I didn't get to that table where Bell Ringer and his friends were sitting, cleared off until after they left, and Pony Pete and Tony Tipper were sitting there when I got back to clean it off. This was folded and tucked under a coffee cup. She handed me a napkin, and three $20 bills fell onto my desk. On the outside of the napkin, in big, bold letters, was printed, something for Stevie. Pony Pete asked me what that was all about, she said, so I told him about Stevie and his mother. Pete looked at Tony, and Tony looked at Pete, and they ended up giving me this. She handed me another paper napkin 
that had something for Stevie scrawled on the outside. And I opened it up, and two $50 bills fell onto the desk. Franny looked at me with those big, wet, shiny eyes and shook her head and just said, truckers, you've got to love them. That was three months ago. Today is Thanksgiving. The first day Stevie is supposed to be back at work. Stevie was thinner and paler, but couldn't stop grinning as he pushed through the doors and headed for the back room where his apron and busing cart were kept. I asked his mother to bring Stevie to work that morning. Hold up there, Stevie, not so fast, I said. I took him and his mother by their arms. Work can wait for a minute. To celebrate your coming back, breakfast for you and your mom is on me. I led them toward the large corner booth in the back of the restaurant. I could feel and hear the rest of the staff following behind as we marched into the dining room. Glancing over my shoulder, I saw booth after booth of grinning truck drivers get up and joined the procession. We stopped in front of the big table. Its surface was covered with coffee cups, saucers, and dinner plates, all sitting slightly crooked on dozen, dozens of folded paper napkins. I tried to sound stern, First thing you have to do, Stevie, is to clean up this mess. Stevie looked at me, then he looked at his mom, then pulled out one of the napkins. It had something for Stevie printed on the outside. As he picked it up, two $100 bills fell onto the table. Stevie stared at the money, then at all the other napkins peeking from beneath all of the utensils, each with his name printed or scrawled on it. I turned to his mother. There's more than $100,000 in cash and checks on that table, all from truckers, trucking companies, and customers of this restaurant that heard about Stevie and your life's situation. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, it really got noisy in the restaurant at that time, with everyone hollering and shouting and giving each other high fives. And yes, there were even some tears. But you know what was funny? While everybody else was busy shaking hands and hugging each other, Stevie had this biggest smile on his face because he was clearing the cups and dishes from the tables that everyone had vacated. Stevie was the best worker I have ever hired. Jesus teaches, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By everyone, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The four Gospels of the New Testament are full of stories in which Jesus loved people. The Samaritan woman at the well, John 4, 1 through 26. The woman caught in the act of adultery who is about to be stoned, John 8, 1 through 11. The ten lepers who were healed by Jesus and only one came back to thank Jesus, Luke 17, 11 through 19. Jesus healing the blind man, Bartimaeus, Mark 10, 46 through 52. Us Christians are called to love everyone, especially all those Stevies that enter our lives. It's not an easy task. 
But Jesus calls us to love those who are the least, the last, and the lost in our society. That is how each one of us will build up the kingdom of God here on earth. The point of the story is this. Here were a group of people who were not the church, who practiced what Jesus was teaching. And this is a lesson for the world to do. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.